Welcome to the Maritime Center here at the historic Coast Guard Station on St. Simons Island. We're just a short distance from some of the most beautiful and magical places on Earth. So take off your shoes and come experience life on the edge. Stand a minute where the waves lap the shore and feel the rhythm of life move the sand beneath your feet. This place is alive and full of wonder. Barrier islands are found on only 2% of the world's coastlines. Georgia's continental shelf slopes gently two feet per mile for about 80 miles and robs incoming waves of their energy. The inward curving shape of Georgia's coast causes six to nine foot tides, which are unusually high when compared to the three foot tides in North Carolina. Two times every 24 hours and 50 minutes, our islands are surrounded with seawater. It's like the slow pumping action of a gigantic heart, allowing sand to shift and build. It's why our barrier islands are much wider than the long, narrow ones with crashing waves that line the North Carolina coast. At low tide, some of Georgia's hard-packed sand beaches extend as far as a quarter of a mile to the ocean's edge. Rivers from the mainland cut paths to the sea, creating areas called sounds that separate the islands. Currents moving out of the inlets collide with other currents moving along the face of the islands and deposit sand on shoals, spits, and sandbars. These sand buildups are not very stable. Shoals and spits and even whole beaches can grow and disappear. Scientists divide barrier islands into several natural zones. Sandbars, mostly seen at low tide, can be here today and gone tomorrow. Here you will find all types of shorebirds resting and feeding, including plovers, terns, gulls, and pelicans. Beaches have two main areas, the intertidal beach, which is underwater at high tide and exposed at low tide, and the dry sand upper beach. Ollie, did you know that because of low surf energy, few shells wash onto our beaches? The best time to find shells is after a storm at low tide. There's a knobbed whelk. Cool. One of the most common shells you'll find on the beach, and it's Georgia's official state shell. A dramatic find on the beach is the horseshoe crab, a primitive form that can grow its helmet-looking shell to more than a foot long. It has a long spiked tail that is used to flip itself upright if necessary. The animal is important to medicine and its copper rich blue blood is used in cancer research and as an indicator of spinal meningitis. The dry and sandy upper beach serves as a nesting ground by a variety of birds as well as loggerhead sea turtles, a signature animal of the Georgia coast. Loggerheads are the only marine turtles that regularly nest here. Dunes are the front lines of island building. At some point, all barrier islands started as sand dunes that were colonized and stabilized by hardy plants. Using excellent sand trapping strategies, sea oats can live on the tops of dunes and stay ahead of migrating sands as other plants are buried. Sea oats are the kings of dune building plants and are protected by law. Where the soil becomes richer, Interdune meadows sport a colorful profusion of flowering weeds, grasses, and woody shrubs. Low, dense, gray-green, the maritime forest canopy covers most of the uplands of the barrier islands. Magnificent live oaks, which some say take a hundred years to grow, a hundred years to live, and a hundred years to die, provide timeless stability. Spanish moss and resurrection ferns adorn branches and trunks. Saw palmettos grow along the ground and shoot up distinctive fan-shaped fronds. Freshwater and brackish sloughs serve as holding tanks to sustain habitat for a variety of coastal species, especially during times of drought. Migrating and wintering waterfowl 
use ponds as resting and feeding areas. In the spring, many wading birds such as herons and egrets congregate to form rookeries where they build nests and raise their young. In the early summer, alligators build nests of their own, oftentimes conveniently close to the rookeries. Did you know that alligators are actually helpful to the birds in the rookeries? They eat the potential predators of the birds, and their eggs are protected throughout the spring. Professor, you're one smart fella. Georgia's low energy coast is only 100 miles long, yet its one half million acres of salt marsh constitute nearly one third of all the salt marshes of the eastern Atlantic states. Salt marshes are spectacular. They can produce biomass measuring nearly 20 tons to the acre, making them four times more productive than the best farmland. Well, that may be true, but I can't quite figure out how the heck you farm in the marsh. It can't beat good old Nebraska dirt. Only special plants can survive in salt water. Most prominent is the tall, smooth cord grass that glows golden at sunrise and sunset, Spartina. Snails move up and down Spartina stalks in sync with the tides. Their biological clock tells them to begin their climb before the tide comes in. Outgoing tides carry dead Spartina stalks away from the estuary to the beach, where it traps blowing sands to help form sand dunes. Armies of fiddler and square-backed crabs scuttle across the muddy floor. Ollie, did you notice the roseate spoonbill? It's the pink bird with a spoon-shaped beak. Wait a second. Let me get my notepad and pencil. These birds are rarely seen along the Georgia coast. You know, you really don't have to go too far off the beaten path to see some amazing sights. This film footage was shot from the marshes of Glynn at low tide near Highway 17. Moving away from the marshes, across the barrier islands and out to sea, there are other wonderful marvels along Georgia's coast. Gray's Reef National Marine Sanctuary is a federally protected ocean bottom. It is one of the largest near shore reefs in the southeastern United States. The sanctuary is located 17 and a half nautical miles off Sapelo Island. Check out this warty sea slug. It's in the process of laying its egg casing. According to the experts at Gray's Reef, this is the first known filming of a warty sea slug laying its eggs. Now that's about the strangest thing I've ever seen. The northern right whale uses our offshore waters as a calving ground, and we've named it our state marine mammal. For the poetic soul that lives in us all, these golden isles stir our imagination with the natural rhythms of tides and seasons. Miles and miles of pungent, sun-baked salt marsh. The intense heat and light of the sand dunes. The flickering green canopy of the live oak forest make an indelible impression upon our senses. Surely, this is the way it has always been and will always be on the edge.